Before we get into today's session, I'd better tell you that I'm on vacation this month. Well, not really on vacation, but I am going to take a little rest today. The subject for this meeting is you, your good health, and how to keep it that way. Yep, it's a film on shop safety. Occasionally, we see people doing things that make us shiver just thinking about what might happen. Sometimes, though, we all need to take a look at our own work habits. Let's do just that by looking through the eyes of some everyday hazards that contribute to accidents. Now, friends, you know that this annual meeting of the Hazard Club is to elect new officers for the next year. We have to decide who among us has been the cause of the most serious accident or the most number of accidents during the last year. To make it easier to vote, some of the former officers are going to tell us how they got elected. I'll start out with my own experience, if you don't mind. I used to be an innocent little bit of chassis grease. They called me Slippery Sam, but I prefer to think of myself as being smooth. It really did hurt my pride when that terrible man dropped me there on the floor and then just walked off and left me. I tried for three whole days to get picked up. My goodness, how I tried. A few men noticed me, but they passed right on by. I got my revenge, though, when that nasty man who dropped me came along carrying a whole armload of tools. I really put the skids under him. When he came down, the whole building shook, and all those little tools smacking him right in the face, it was oh. Yeah, Sam, that's when I hit under a car. Nobody noticed that a drift punch was missing. <laughs> One guy found me, though. While I was sleeping, someone moved the car I was under. I woke up just in time to see this big foot coming at me. Nobody walks on me, so I flipped him, just like judo. He started out doing a backflip, but he only made it halfway. Landed right on his brain bucket. Chances are about even he'll be back. That is, if he can get used to working with that brace on his neck. Uh, what's up, Bulgy? Oh, my aching busted back. They had us boxes stacked up five high out there in the parts room. And I was on the bottom. Oh, it took me a while to figure out my dirty deed. But it was a beauty. You see... My uncle was a packing box for a bomb site about 20 years ago, and he taught me plenty. The timing was the big thing. Falling time, air currents, and the speed of the parts man walking under me. Perfect. So I just collapsed and... Bombs away! <laughs> a direct hit with all four boxes. I'll bet that guy is two feet shorter today. <laughs> Uncle would have been proud of me. Yeah, that was pretty good, Bulgy. But sometimes a near miss does just as much good. I put the fear into one of the lube men, and I guess he'll never forget it. I've been working for years lifting up these big cars, and nobody ever checked to see if I'm still in good shape. But I had this bad seal, see? I really strained to hold that car. Then that bad seal just up and let go. It shook him up plenty. I'm kind of glad I missed him, really. Of course, it wouldn't have happened if he had used my safety leg like he's supposed to. You let him off pretty easy. You'd think people would take the hint and use the safety devices provided for them. But some guys just never learn. One joker shoved me under the front of a car, and without looking to see that I had a good place to lift, he jacked up the whole front end. I was willing to let him get away with that. But then 
He left me there, holding all that weight and crawled underneath to bleed the brakes. Didn't even bother to slip those floor stands under the frame. Someone walking past just happened to bump my handle and load shifted so I couldn't hold onto it anymore. The brakes on that car never did get bled that day. But the joker underneath the car sure did. Wendy, you've been awfully quiet today. It just isn't like you at all. Especially when you think about all the trouble you've caused. Well, Sam, it isn't that I look for trouble. It's just that people don't seem to realize the power I let loose. When I get all pressured up, man, I'm dynamite. Like this one day, I was helping to clean out some fuel lines. The wise guy was helping aim me at the character in the next stall and push the blow button. I was full of dirt, and when he blasted away, pow, right in the luckers. I hear they might be able to save one eye. But let me tell you about my sneakiest one. Remember how all the men used to wash their hands in gas or solvent? Well, one of the overhaul men got himself greased up like a pig at the county fair. Real messy. He dipped into that solvent tank to wash up and reached for me to dry off his hands and arms. Oh, what a chance. The solvent opened his pores like a big door, and I slammed something into his bloodstream. His arms and hands swelled up till they looked like Popeye. His condition's improving, though. Yeah, Wendy, you always were quite a blowhard. But it takes real talent to qualify as a hazard by not doing something the way I did it. All I did was stand back and watch these two technicians try to wrestle a transmission out of a car the hard way, by hand. Should have been my job. You see, I've got this funny-shaped head. It fits the bottom of a transmission. And when you pump my arm, my neck stretches out so I can take the weight of the whole gearbox on my head. Then... A simple twist, and I let the transmission down real nice and easy. Too bad those two didn't ask for my help. I understand that one of them got away with a smashed big toe. But the doc says the second man has a permanent wave in his spine. Excuse the interruption, but someone better turn the record over before we have an accident. Now to get on with the meeting, let's hear from our friend Sparky. He had a most interesting experience. That I did, Sam. Most of the time, I'm a pretty hard-working guy. Don't cause any trouble for anyone, as long as my condition isn't neglected. But you always run into someone who just plain asks for it. I've got this ground wire that's supposed to be hooked up in case there's a short somewhere. Well, there's one guy who never hooks it up. So the other day, he was using me to drill holes for a mirror, and he was standing in some water. When the drill broke through the sheet metal, it got hung up. That sure shook me up plenty. Something happened inside me, and the electrons started jumping around all over the place. The guy who was using me did some jumping around, too. In fact, he could have won a Charleston contest with a dance he did. I hung on until the plug came out of the socket, just about the same time his feet slipped on the wet floor. We were both on the sick list for a while. You think you had it rough? Let me tell you what we hand tools go through sometimes. We're kind of close, you know, like to stick together. Well, the guy I work for is no respecter of hand tools. Scatters us all over the bench, on the floor, and he even left one of the boys in a customer's car once. We decided to get even. We flipped the washer to see who would do the job, and Billy Box Wrench won. Bill's a pretty husky guy, goes three quarters of an inch across the shoulders. But he asked me to help, and I agreed. So Bill hid from the boss just when he was needed. The boss just naturally reached for me, even though I'm not qualified for the job. To top it off, he slipped a piece of pipe over my handle to get more leverage. I knew it was going to be rough when I got a look at that nut. All rusted, corroded, and practically no corners. Well, I hung on to the nut until old muscles was pulling real good. It hurt my jaw when I finally let go, but it was worth it. You should have seen a skin peeling off his knuckles just before he ricocheted off the bench and landed in the corner. We hand tools are having a big party tonight to celebrate the long rest we're about to get. I already had my party. It was a big blast. I'm sure you all remember it because of the noise and heat it caused. 
I was only one battery in a line of ten, hooked up to a charger. When that charger is turned on, we generate a lot of hydrogen. Well, when the man came in to take me off the charger, he didn't turn the current off first. He lifted one of the leads off a terminal, and a teeny little spark jumped, and... It hurt my ribs to blow my top that way, but I think I made things pretty hot for him. A battery made things mighty hot for me, too. In fact, I'll never be the same. Neither will the fellow who was wearing me. He really should leave me on the bench when he's working. I'm always getting snagged on something. The one that did the trick for me was a beauty. I got hung up between a hot terminal and a good solid ground. That 12-volt punch burned me up plenty. Sort of barbecued my owner's arm, too. He's going to retire me. Well, club members, I think those examples should give you an idea of what it takes to be an officer of the Hazard Club. Now... Hold it there, Sam! I've been sitting here listening to all these tales about how everybody played nasty tricks, hurt people, and put them out of work. I just got to say you're all a bunch of pikers. When I get started, I put everyone in the house out of work. Now, let me give you a for instance. There's this guy, see? And he's cleaning some kind of iron on his workbench. Had a pan of gasoline and a brush, and he's doing a real fine job. And there are some rags and a newspaper, and then he stopped to light a smoke. And man, oh, oh, you just don't pass up a party like that. Whoosh! I did it! Oh, and how I did it! Beautiful! He might have nipped me right then if there had been an extinguisher close by. But he didn't even know where the extinguishers were. One of the other boys spotted one hanging in the corner and went after it. This is where it really got funny. There was so much stuff piled in front of the extinguisher, it took the poor guy almost a half a minute to get to it. And you know what I can do with a 30-second head start. He finally made it back to the fire, and then he read the instructions on the extinguisher, giving me another five or ten seconds. So he pulled the pin, squeezed the handle, and... <laughs> it was empty! What a riot! The best time I've had since I did the bit with Mrs. O'Leary's cow back in Chicago. What's that? Did everybody get out of the building? <laughs> How should I know? I was busy burning the place down. Well, there they are. And that's an idea of how we might look to a bunch of hazards. Sounds a little far-fetched? Well, maybe. But there's a lot of food for thought here, too. First of all, there's nothing really funny about any accident, especially to the guy who's involved. Second, remember that the hazard doesn't cause the accident. It's caused by people who ignore the hazard. If you see some dangerous condition and you don't do anything about it, you may be contributing to someone else's accident. Finally, keep in mind that a lot of accidents happen outside the shop, around the house, on the road, almost any place there are people. Be careful wherever you go. We want to see you back at work every day.